Sarah Stein won the agenda to approve the minutes of the April 19, 2016 regular meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item one. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the regular meeting minutes? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two is to receive and place on file drainage repairs, and we have none this week. Item number three. Approve wage increases for the following correctional officers. Tyler Powers from 1510 per hour to 1542 per hour, effective April 30th, 2016, and Emily Johnson from 1542 per hour to 1572 per hour, effective April 28th, 2016. Chairman, I will have a drink. I'll second this motion. Motion and second. Any discussion? Salary adjusted adjustment for Shelley Napier from 1523 per hour to 1636 per hour, effective April 14, 2016, for a recommendation of Jennifer Vincent. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? I was just wondering why this is late again. <laughs> in the same pay period because it does cause a problem in Carol's office with Tina to get these if she has to go back and change them. So if it's in the same pay period, I have no problem doing it. But could you address that, Carol? Is this within the same pay period? Uh, let's see. I think uh, Tina did adjust it because it was effective the 14th and that's what they did. Okay. So that answers I would, the question. I would ask again that all the department heads turn these in a month early. We don't care if they're a month early, but it just creates a problem with Tina if they're turned in late. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item number four carries. Item number five, receive and place on file promotion for Angela Harrison from paralegal to support recovery office effective April 25th, 2016 for recommendation of Jessica Wiermoth, child support recovery unit supervisor. Chairman, I uh, move item number five. I'll second. I have a, well, the reason I'm saying that is because it, it reads a little awkward. What is it, support recovery office? I think it's officer, right? It oh. might be an army symbol on that. Okay. Uh, I don't know. There's, uh, these you receive in place on file because they're part of the six <coughs> area. Uh, with our county employees versus state, even though they go by the state guidelines. And Revenue funds received by Iowa Code 356-7 by C 
for new software implementation. Uh, I'll move by number eight. Second. I have a motion and a second, sure. What this is, and under that code section 356.7, we are allowed to charge sentenced inmates for room and board in the jail. We have done so since about 2000. It's a little mix up uh, with the treasurer's office trying to find some figures, but since 2008, we have $76,237.86. That is our 60% of the revenue. The board has the other 40% and are in charge of that 40%. Our 60% says that we can use it for things in the jail, which we looked up to what we could. We're in the process of implementing a new software, which would be the jail, civil records, and records management. There's three different things for our office. We'll be doing that at a, at a total cost of about $145,000. And then if you add maintenance, which won't kick in for another year, uh, the price goes up. But to implement it, we're at $145,000 first year through the maintenance. $50,000 is what I come up with that to utilize just for the jail. The jail is our biggest part of our software package. We could probably break down into the servers that Andy and I have talked and, and maybe even raise that, but I think 50,000 is, is a fair amount and, and a reasonable amount. It's very easy without trying to do percentage of the servers for our part of the money. This money has never been used since its implementation. So uh, it's kind of fitting in a way that sentence prisoners in our jail are paying for the software to keep track of the records. And that's what it's intended for. So the, the taxpayers are paying for the 50,000 of that software. But they're paying a lot more to keep it. Well, <laughs> it is not money that comes in in large quantities all the time, obviously. But uh, it was implemented and it was put on the judgment entry. So. If somebody that has been in jail and they owe money for their housing, if they get their life straightened around, which we all hope they do, and they go to get a loan for a house or something, this is going to pop up that they have to pay. And we, we get it on a steady, somewhat of a steady basis. It's just not large amounts. But, uh, obviously, it's not too bad if from 08 we have 76,000, which is 60%. Is that something to go after, Collections? No. no. <clears throat> Any other questions? So basically, I need the chairman to sign that contract, which leads into the next part. If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? I don't know if you heard this. Oh, wow. I don't know what The firm and authorized chair to sign a financing agreement between the Wells Fargo. This is to update the radio system in the dispatch center of the Webster County Telecommunications Center. The total cost to go to internet-based radio system, which will be compatible with the P25 if the state does that in the state's platform. Whereas, you could talk on a car radio anywhere in the state once that's all up and running. But at this point, it saves us some money because it's internet-based, so as long as the LEC has internet, if it gets wiped out in a tornado or we have internet in the county, we can transfer to Humboldt County or Wright County, who just went to the same system. We can send a dispatcher up there, dispatch our vehicles for the city of Fort Dodge and Western County and all emergency vehicles from another telecom. This has no amount in there. The amount is 263000 but 
That includes a $100,000 grant from the state. Obviously, we have to front that money, and then once it is completed and the work has started, uh, we get that $100,000 back. So the loan amount is roughly going to be around $160,000. Any questions from the floor? Well, if there was some large reason that there's no internet in Webster County, then obviously we're, we're not going to be able to transfer things by the internet to another location. We could still probably dispatch some from another location, it's just not going to be as convenient. We'll have to still have to transfer at that point, our phone lines are probably taken out too, so we'll have to transfer our 911 calls, which typically go to right now. It would be on the same basis, it just won't be as near as convenient. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Carries. Item 10. Approved and authorized chair to sign Western County contract for library services. Agenda for fiscal year 2016. Chairman, all the way. Ken. Second. Motion and second. Any questions or comments on item number 10? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Number 11. Approved change order number 2 of the Law Enforcement Program Remodel Project Increase Cost of Contract $7,006.34. County. Um, this is uh, so that we currently have a device upstairs that is a disaster uh, recovery uh, uh, story server that we actually back up all of our stuff to on a nightly basis. Um, so what we're planning on doing is what the idea behind this is to get this off site so that way if there is a uh, like tornado or something to wipe out this building we have our data off site and we can then with this service we can uh, actually be able to access that through um, internet connection and be able to, you know, get business back up and running within a, more, a very short period of time. Uh, yes, it does rely on the internet connection, but I'm, you know, we can go anywhere and do this. You know, we can go to another county and do it. We can go to another business that's up and running, whatever it might be. So this uh, this gives our our stuff off site, our data off site, so that way. Uh, um, we are better protected, you know, anything can happen in the courthouse here and right now we really don't have that insurance so that our data is um, being protected in, in that capacity. So um, this provides us with uh, our uh, DR uh, storage server access to that I and mean, it's going to be housed down in Des Moines in IP Pathways uh, Data Center um, and we can, uh, with this service, we can uh, we get nightly our, our actually salary backups to it. So, you know, it, it is, uh, I guess it's just like an insurance policy. It's just a way for us to ensure that we have our data protected. Andrew, you're usually pretty frugal with our money. Yes. Uh, what's the, are there a variety of services available? Is this the, the reason why I picked this service is they are the vendor that supported the, the hardware that we currently have. Uh, and since our hardware that, that's here on site is going through their facility, I wanted a vendor that knew our hardware and knew how to set it up so that way when we needed to access it, we could without any issues. <coughs> it's your belief that they're competitive products? Yes, they are. Okay. And I have looked at other services. The only problem I have with the other services is they wanted to use their hardware instead of the current hardware we already had. And so, you know, and it cost is actually going to be a little higher. Okay, thank you. Any questions? All in favor of the 
master service agreement between IP Pathways and Western California? Aye. Uh, opposed? Item 12 carries. Item 13, consider two requests to assign tax sales certificate parcel P140004 at 1146 Lincoln Street, Gallery, Iowa, and one request from Richard L. Miller and one request from the City of Gallery. This is a consideration. The next item will be the action item. Mr. Chairman, I move. No. It's just a confusing discussion. Yeah. What we have here is a landowner neighboring this property contacted us and is interested in having asking for everything to be waived. There is a $2,000 assessment on there by the city. City. The city said they would like to be able to handle that themselves since they do have an assessment for tearing down the building on that property. So Carol separated it out. There's one for consideration and one for the actual next item that we need to sign. So the city has been the request for the meeting. Yep. Carol, you received the minutes from the meeting last week. Yes, and uh, they would like it. Uh, generally, uh, if a governmental entity is interested, that trumps any other. Moving on to item number 14, approve request to assign tax certificate, tax sales certificate P140004, parcel 171205013 at 1146 Lincoln Street, Gallery Island. Assign the previously read parcel number tax sales certificate to the city of Gallery. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Item 15 is a public hearing. This is final consideration of an amendment to zoning ordinance number 46 and zoning map to rezone the following described property from A1 to A2 to build a house. Part of the east half of the southeast corridor of section 12, township 88, range 29, west of the 5th PM, Iowa, and northeast corner of their bounded and described as follows. By the public highway on the northeast and south, and by the west line of said east half of southeast quarter, subject to the easements and except the right of way of the Fort Dodge, Des Moines, and Southern Railroad Company, Webster County, Iowa. I would declare the public hearing open. Do you have any written or written comments or objections? Okay. Any questions or comments from the floor? Questions or comments from the table? Item number 16, consider approval of final consideration of amendment to zoning ordinance number 46 and zoning map to rezone the following described property from A1 to A2 to build a house, part of the east half of the southeast quarter of section 12, township 88, range 29, west of the 5th PM, Iowa, in the northeast corner thereof, bounded and described as follows. By the public highway on the north, east, and south, by the west line of said east path, southeast quarter, subject to easement and accept the right of way of the Fort Dodge, Des Moines, and Southern Railroad Company, Webster County, Iowa. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item 16. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the floor? Any discussion from the table? All in favor?
Because the majority of the supervisors did not vote to adopt this resolution, the resolution is invalid. As such, the opinion of our office is that the property in question is still owned by Webster County. However, because the invalid resolution has been filed with the Webster County Recorder's Office, it is now necessary to correct the record and the documents filed with the recorder. Our recommendation is that the board should pass a new, complete resolution to clarify the record. The new resolution should spell out Iowa Code Section 331.302, subsection 7, which dictates the number of members required to pass the resolution. It should also explain that a prior action was not that the prior action was not passed by a majority of the supervisors, and therefore is an improper board action. Finally, the new resolution shall clearly explain the board's intention to nullify the prior action. We would further recommend consulting with an attorney who prepares title opin opinions to ensure that the new resolution is sufficient to clarify the record in the recorder's office to ensure that the first reported resolution does not encumber title, especially since the original resolution did not identify the legal description of the property at issue. Our office would be happy to contact an outside attorney and prepare that resolution for the board's consideration. Uh, the opinion of our office is that it is, it is imperative that the record be immediately corrected in this matter to protect the county's interests and avoid future liability related to the improper transfer of title. Please do not hesitate to contact our, us with any further questions or concern, concerns and it's signed by myself. Thank you. Um, after discussion with Ben Benson, uh, county attorney and other attorneys, we would ask Randy to remove barricades. Anything else on National Avenue? If not, moving on to item number 18, discuss health insurance deductible options. Representative of the Coleman District, 
And we was here two weeks ago, and the county supervisor had come up with the idea that they had no control over what we were doing. And now we've got it set up for an election for the 28, two days away. And now they come up and tell me that we have to go through to you guys to get permission to do it. Well, then you better grab her because she just stepped out. So she took, she's the one that said that we had to go by the, by the code. The code said, but you guys said you had no control. We go off of what she tells us, Dennis. That just like you come here before every meeting, you want to get advice from her. We get that same advice from her. Well, we so never did contact us back until today. And you're here yelling at us for that. So you have a person there to contact that gives you written opinions, and that is your person. And she's the same one who gives us advice. So as we've shared with you before, we follow the exact same rules that she gives you. She uh, was to get back to me, and then I was going to share it with you. And okay. Because it's something contrary, because there's the two boards, and they want to join and uh, combine those boards. And there was a prior county attorney's opinion from years ago that yes. said they could not, and she believes that so there's she something is that has that changed. I haven't received it yet, so I haven't been able to share it with you. But, um, the intent is that she has that to sit on open Well, like I said, the only problem with it is it takes a petition. The petition has to be so many days before filed here, so many days before. Um, which, we were, which I did ask, and nobody knew nothing but about I, it. But I asked her the last time you were in my office, and uh, I just waited for her to get it back to me in writing. So we got it in writing. Is it Jen's is Jen responsibility to work for Coleman District? No, but she we're not responsibility. We're not. I mean, yeah, Jen okay. is our council and Carol's council. Then, so you guys you got council to guide you through this process. We got the code. We go by the code. But, but you don't. And she just like Carol. Carol just said the last at the meeting. And he says. We have nothing to do with it. We're not responsible. Now all of a sudden, you we're, guys are responsible. But, but we're not, Dennis. We're it not is, responsible. Like we are not responsible for it at all. If you bring it, if the citizens bring us a petition to join the board, then her advice is that we will consider that, do the hearings and everything to join the board. But her job and our job is not to run your, your districts. They are a standalone government agency. We are not responsible. And she isn't responsible to give you a legal advice for that either. Well, that's true, but, but that's what you've been asking from her. So why, why we sit here two days before all the action happened, and all of a sudden tell us we got to go through you guys? It doesn't <laughs> say you have to. That is, I think you're, you're, you're interpreting it the way you want to here. It does not say. It says you present a petition to us. Do you have a petition? Yeah. Did you give it to Carol? No, we wait for her to find out what was going on. Did Carol get back to you? No. Well, then. There's where you're at with the process. She's waiting to hear back from the county attorney. And you're here trying to blame us. We can't help you unless you follow the process. That is what you emphasized the last time. You guys said you weren't responsible for nothing. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions or comments for the citizens? Oh, here it comes. I know, I'm sorry. Okay, I bring good news then. Um, Carrie Prescott, the director of your public health department. Um, we had an administrative audit that was um, showed up at our door last week from the Department of Public Health. Um, we were trying to come for our personnel policies, our training, um, our receipt processes with the treasurer and um, as we receive checks and checks go out, uh, what they do is they come in and uh, state I they want to see October and January, and they check everything with a fine-tooth comb. Um, they look at all the administration policies, if we have internal policies. Um, one good thing, they didn't find anything <laughs> around our financial structure, which is amazing. What he did recommend, though, I really hate getting recommendations, is um, he arrived at 8.30 after he was looking for an hour how to locate us. And so he had been at different areas. He, I think, came to the Ken's front door, didn't know how to get to us, came in the back way, then went into the bank, 
Um, so when he got to us, we were dealing with a lot of, and it was raining that day, so we had a lot of frustration that was joy, you know, facing us. So his recommendation that day was that we have to have signage because we provide services to the community through our WIC, our maternal health, our immunization, through TB analysis, and we have to have some kind of signage on our building. Um, and he's putting a recommendation by the end of June. So if we can have some kind of task force or if I can have a, a coordinator um, assigned, we have a Board of Health meeting in the month of May, it's a pretty fast um, deadline that he wants something or a plan or something that we're going to have signage. I think it's because he was mad that day. <laughs> but anyway, that's where I'm at. So, well, I think we have to go through the city to get a variance for that. So. Well, and with the, 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 this process has been dragging on for forever years. Mm -hmm. And the big issue is because we have a commercial tenant in there that has put their signage on all the sites for our building. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, that, it, that it needs to be directed that one of their signs come down. I mean, this is a public a county building. It's not Northwest Bank. And we so still have to sign the building. Right? Okay. A sign we took off the fire building, where is it? I think it's stored at 3 I'm not sure I'd have to look at it. Okay, but that's what the issue is, is that every, we're in violation of the city signing ordinance because Norwest Bank has their sign on all sides of the building. Okay. I don't disagree that, that you certainly are entitled to and should have a sign out there. It does strike me strange that the guy just didn't call you back. He knew how to get to our building. He could figure out how to get into what door. And then when he got in the elevator, there's no signs inside the building that says the health department's on the second floor. So, so you're talking inside and outside. Inside and out. He was more kind of adamant about outside signage. I'm sorry. I know it had nothing to well, do with our administrative yeah, okay. audit. Yeah. We do need a sign, though. I mean, okay. I'm not. I, we need a Boy, sign. you kind of wonder about the audit, though. Yeah. We couldn't find the place, so we're going to find anything. I was just going to say I would support that. I we have people from the V from trying to get to the VA's office come up to our waiting room. They can't walk through our HIPAA area, so we have to send them down the stairs, around the building, up the other end in order to get the VA office. And the same occurs with Terry. They can't get people to our office from their office except to go through our handicap accessible entrance. It's confusing. So the public needs to be aware. So I so it does sound agree. Like
That's frustrating, the signs. That's because we have